Well, hello, okay. Mr. Ron Head. Hello, Suze. <laughs> it's been a couple of years since we've um, played in the sandbox together. I, I don't know how you find the time to do it. I know you're, you're booked two years in advance, uh, almost every day of the week. So I, I don't know how you do it. Well, thank you. Well, I have fun and there's a lot of cool projects that I get to be a part of and um, just enjoying all of it. You know, it, it, we, you and I started a long, long time ago with your very first session uh, down in Florida. From there, we did a, a just a boatload of sessions uh, that we shared. Almost 45. It, well, I didn't did know you that. realize that? It's no, almost 45. <laughs> wow. Okay. I think you get the 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 record for the most sessions I've given one person then for sure. Um, but then in just to recap for people that may not have um, seen our work with the event, um, in one of those sessions, you started talking about the event. And to the best of my knowledge, that was, well, it was the first time I had heard that phrase. I don't, I really don't know if it had been used before. It's definitely been used since. Um, and anyways, we had this conversation about the event. And so through the years, a year or two years apart, we've, we've tapped back in to this part of you that likes to share this information in this deep state of hypnosis to ask questions. So um, today, as I have done always, I channeled some questions. They were kind of surprising to me um, in how they were phrased. And um, that's what the fun part is, because it's not really me making it up. It's, it's information coming in that wants to be asked about and you don't know anything about the questions i'm going to ask you like always no i don't Is that right uh, i know <laughs> that i have been uh, asking for a good connection all week and okay. i know that i felt that energy envelope come in about an hour and a half ago oh well, uh, well. I'm, sitting, I'm sitting here vibing i don't know if you can tell it but i well, that's great. That perfect timing, nice delivery. Um, and in addition to the questions that I channeled, a friend has asked a few questions, so we'll be doing those as well. Very interesting perspective on those questions. Well, um, do you think we should go ahead and get ready? Yeah, we can do that. Okay, sure. so so what we're going to do is um, Ron just puts himself under. Um, why don't you just just say, I'm ready when you're ready. We'll just be quiet while you get yourself into that nice deep state of relaxation or hypnosis. And then we'll just kind of flow from there. I'll see you on the flip side. Okay, thank you. We are here. Well, welcome, and um, it's been about two years since we've had a conversation like this. And I guess I would like to just give you the floor to begin with and um, let you share with us first what, what information you want to give us. We began our conversation nine years ago. <laughs> Things have changed greatly since that time. There have been huge changes in the topic we discuss between each of our sessions. At the time we began, the thing called the event appeared to be in its Pardon us, we're searching for a word. In its possibilities and probabilities, because of the state of awakening in humanity at that time, if it were to have happened, when it would have happened, it would need to have been 
what we call an instant event. Well, instant in our time and instant in your time are two different things, but because we don't have time, you understand. We have chains of events. Movements arose, changes occurred as they do moment to moment, always. And between the first event recording and second, it appeared that more and more people in the world were waking up to truths and possibilities. Most importantly, waking up to who they might be. And the same was true after the next and the next and the next conversation we had. It has snowballed, as we said it would at one point. The event that we were describing at first as being instant has been drawn out now for nine years, but in that nine years, it has become apparent to many of you that you are in the event it is not instant, it is ongoing, and it is enormous. So the first thing we would like to do in this conversation is congratulate all of those who understand those things. Well, with that, um, before we met up this morning, I was nudged to go back and listen to the event part five. And I just kind of moved the cursor and just stopped just to see what the conversation was like at that point. And I want to kind of paraphrase what was said, because this was done in 2016 uh, before all the um, rapid chaos and change started up. And I'd like just to read this and then I'd like to hear your thoughts on it from the position of where we're at today in 2023, if that's okay with you. Of course. Okay. That uh, clip was called the main event. And you said the main event is the tipping point of which humanity arise, arrives and causes people to start coming together to understand who they are, how they are, and how to be. There are many, many teachers, and people understand the teaching of who you are, what you are, and what your purpose is. That has been hidden. Major changes have begun. DNA is changing. It is spreading like a virus, <laughs> not a contagion. Um, when one's consciousness expands, you enhance your DNA. Now, with the vantage point of where we've been and looking back, those words are, are pretty interesting. Um, what do you think about that statement as we reflect back on, on the last several years? When we began speaking of the event at one point, I think it was our second or third conversation, we mentioned that the event to us is the progress and awakening and evolution of Earth humans. And yes, all of the things that you just reminded us of have been ongoing for this entire time. They indeed are snowballing. For those who are not feeling these things, we would point to some of the technologies that are becoming available to you, which 
do not cause these changes. They influence the external and internal environment of your life energy and allow your life energy to make the changes that it wishes to make. In other words, as one technology technologist, scientist likes to say, the energy that created your body heals your body. And that is what is happening to all of you, whether or not you feel it happening. All right, very good. And to follow up on, on your opening statement, about the event being all at once or this somewhat um, gradual process, a linear type of feel to it. I, I can tell from some of my clients that I've met that have had rapid awakenings, it's hard on them. That's, it's, a, it's a hard thing on the system to, to awaken so quickly and not have a little bit of time to adjust. Um, to these changes. So I, I, I understand that. And I understand as humanity, we're kind of making these choices and changes as a whole, as we go through it. It's not something that's written down with a start and a finish date. Would you agree with that? We would agree with that. Many humans have gone through these changes for thousands of years. Not populations, but groups, individuals. And in the groups, the teachers of those groups always warned people of the dangers, they call them, of those instant awakenings. So people who say, this is leading us into another train of thought, I'm sorry. People who say, bring it on, I'm waiting, I'm ready, have no idea what they're bringing on or <laughs> ready for. The other train of thought is that there are the same sorts of voiced wishes in your overall community or societies with them regarding changes in their governments and in their finance and in their, you know, all the things that are going on. Bring it on. We're ready. Why is it taking so long? You don't know what you're asking for. Yes, I do. I'm ready. No, you don't. Even those who think you do and who have the most information don't know. They're the most ready, but they're not ready. And that is the reason that things are taking so long because the movers and shakers on your planet that are causing these things to occur began to realize that they could make those changes in ways that would not, are not causing the catastrophic results for those of the, you who need to experience them. And so we would suggest that it would be a good idea to simply be grateful for what is being done, both okay. for your society and individually in your bodies and minds. Okay, Sorry so that me. makes sense. No, no, no. That makes a lot of sense because we have to 
um, we have to be able to digest it and how we digest it is going to shift as a collective over what we call time. Is that correct? Yes. And okay. those who are wishing for speed and rapidity and, and vast change are not cons they are looking at themselves, of course, but they're not looking at grandma and grandpa and great grandpa and the children and those who already are unable to take care of themselves and they're wired up to machines just to keep them alive. The people who have not the ability to even imagine where they're going to get their food tomorrow. There are millions and millions and millions of people who are not fortunate enough to be in the situation of those who are saying, bring it on. Not to mention, so, that. pardon me. Is that then, are we waiting for everybody to be ready as, or? As many as possible as okay. many as possible. The awakening now is not happening with more and more individuals every day. It's happening with thousands or tens of thousands of individuals with every, I'm not even going to say day, we see it happening tens of thousands of individuals with every further event. Okay. It is not time driven. It is event driven. A must happen before B, B before C, C before D. Instead of the whole alphabet dumped on you at one time. But there was a time when that was a possibility, there was. correct? There okay. was, and that was because there were so few who would have been able to make the jump at that time. Okay. okay, fair enough. Um, okay, so here's one of the questions that was channeled through today. Um, and this is one where the phrasing is kind of interesting to me. Um, it says, how is the event, um, and to me it felt like the event as its own conscious being, how is the event imagining the life of the planet? How is the event imagining the life of the planet? We're trying to untangle the logic in that sentence. What we can say is that when you come out the other end of this event and understand this nine years that we are speaking of is the event for us and it is instant. It's like snapping your fingers to us and it changed. But when you come out the other side We started to say what you see, but we're going to say what you build. What you build will be nothing like what you are living in now. You are living in a complete and total fabrication, which is intended to benefit only a very few. A very few. And you are going to build a society where everything you do benefits everyone and everything in your environment, the way it was intended to be, the way it once was, as a matter of fact, and the way it is in hundreds of other civilizations of which you know nothing. Okay. 
All right, fair enough. Um, all right, I'm gonna switch over to a few other questions here. Uh, the question is, what role will extraterrestrial civilizations play in the event? Are playing in the event. <laughs> the problem is, you see, that the people whose fears cause shoot first and ask questions later are the people in charge of weapons that are capable of and actually have caused great damage to what you call ETs. There are many civilizations helping to usher you through what you are going through. And it is too dangerous for them at this point anyway to make themselves known to your society, although they do make themselves known to individuals. Um, but they could not say, you will find us on the South Lawn at the White House next Thursday morning. <laughs> because any of them that tried to get there would run the risk of being blown out of your sky. Uh, like we say, the ones in charge of many of your weapons are still those who want to shoot first and ask questions later. And there's no reason to risk that because the outcome of what is happening is already known. You have decided it and it will happen. Can you, yeah, can you, can you expand on that a little bit, what we've decided? Okay. <laughs> Your perception is that we are here where we are and you are there where you are. That's the way you've been taught. That's what you observe but you observe what you have been taught. The truth is, we are you and you are we. And what happens in your world is what you build. You are all familiar with, you decided to be there and you decided to have the life that you're living. I did not, why would I ever choose this? Immediately, you should see that the one who says, I did not, considers themselves separate. And you are not. Now, there are many, many, many lessons for you to learn and many steps to take along the way. When you finally come back to who you are in the singular with the platter full of things you have learned and say, look what I brought. <laughs> That's where you're going. Can be no other way. Did we explain that? Yeah, that's, yes, thank you. That, that was a lot of fun, thank you. Um, okay, uh, then similar question, um, what role will or is inner earth civilizations playing in the event? The civilizations that you're asking about are 
basically unobserved by you for the same reason that the ones above your head are not discerned by you. It's dangerous. They're peaceful. They don't want to mingle with the current human civilizations because the first thing you would do is shoot them. However, to the same extent as there is interaction with what you call ETs, there is interaction with those who live below you. There will come a point where none of that is hidden from you any longer. And further, things which you think are, currently believe are fantasies, that they never really existed, uh, will also be visible to many, if not all of you. They don't want to be seen now either. If you consider that all of your perceptions are vibrations on a continuum, but they are very, very restricted in their breadth. As you expand your consciousness, as you increase your perceptions, you will see more, hear more, understand much more of what is around you and what is it within you. And so all of these will begin, what is the phrase you use? Coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> and when they come out of the woodwork, the what we call the inner earth civilizations, how will they be assisting? The major way is for all of these other civilizations is to show you and teach you that you can exist with everyone else, whether they look like you or not, whether they believe like you or not, whether they live like you or not, you can live with them in peace because you will have learned as they have learned that you are safe. You are safe. You are safe. Nothing can harm you because of who you are. That is the one thing that they know that you don't. I love that. Okay, nice. All right. Um, okay. What does the event have to do with ascension and ascended beings? Ascension is what happens to beings who ascend. <laughs> You. you ascended when you learned how to plant crops and harvest them and eat them instead of killing things, which of course you still do some of. You ascended 
when you learned to harness energies to accomplish things that you could no longer build, to build a building instead of living in a cave, to build a two-story building instead of a one-story building and it not fall down. To build roads and vehicles with wheels and then by golly vehicles with wings <laughs> part of the problem is you are arrogant enough to look at carvings in stone, which we know you looked at very recently, Suzanne, <laughs> which show winged craft carved in stone many thousands of years ago and think that you invented it. Not true. You remembered it. That's what happened. You remembered it. And as you remember it, those who remember it and those who control what is disseminated after it's remembered, let it leak out to you in tiny little bits. We'll give you an example. There was a man named Nicola who told you over a hundred years ago that the telephone you were using wasn't something new and that very soon you would be carrying it around in your pockets. And it has finally happened. Why is that? He told you, showed you how to harness energy from the universe around you and broadcast it around the world to be used any way you wanted. And they squashed it so that they could send it through wires and charge you for it. So One of the most traumatic things that your society is about to learn is what you are actually capable of and using that they've not allowed you to know about or see or know or, or use. Advanced technology? Is that what you're discussing? 60 to 100 years in advance of where you are. Mm -hmm. And when you think about what you've... Your grandparents, great-grandparents, thought that automobiles were wondrous, wondrous things. What are your grandchildren going to see? Yeah. And... There's going to be more advancement made within the next 10 years than you have seen in the past 100. Wow. And it's already being used. It's merely going to be unwrapped. Right. Part of the problem is that some of that is so powerful. and is still in the hands of those who should not have it. That progress for safety's sake, safety's sake alone needs to be slowly brought about.
Did we wander again? Did we answer your question? <laughs> no, you wander all you want. That's it's always good. Okay, so here's a question. Earth is ascending. Humanity will become aware of their inherent power. Perhaps ETs will live among us. Perhaps they already are. They um, are. <laughs> will all this occur gradually or will we um, conceive of it or perceive of it all at once? Gradually. Um, it's already there. Um, but it will be it will become known when several things occur and as i mentioned some of them you will see that they are already occurring mm -hmm. one of the main ones is that those who control the information need to get their hands off the controls <laughs> That's what's keeping you in the dark. There are now hundreds, uh, even in just your English language, hundreds of people who make known as much as they are able to uncover and discover. But you do not see it on your television set and you do not read it in your magazines and newspapers. Why is that? Because your televisions and your magazines and your newspapers are controlled by the people with their hands on the wheel. And they do not want to let go. However, new, in your word, new media is being launched, which are not controlled by those people and those who really want to know what's going on may wish to search those out <laughs> the other thing is one of the other things is that increasingly the control of weaponry is being taken over. Um, and some people fear what they see happening in that arena. We would point out that where you are going, there is no need for weaponry. So you do not need to fear the fact that it's being moved or the controls are changing or the boundaries are changing or it's all happening by design. They sent X amount of fighter planes to here. They sent X amount of this there. And what happened to it when it got there? It got destroyed. It got destroyed by design, you will not need it. So if you don't have any of it, you can't use it to kill each other with. What did they say? Swords into plowshares. That's what's happening. Interesting, okay, wow. All right. Well, I have one last question. This is one of the channeled questions. Um, how can an individual guide himself to calm and peace? There are so many methods, almost none of them new, although some are. What we will say is that the calm and the peace, and if we may say so, the love that you are seeking is you.
find that. Find it. The health that you seek is that. The power that you seek is that. It is I am. Find I am. Now, we will say that some of the technologies that are being released are capable of vastly hurrying up that process for you. Look for those. Because some of you, for instance, say, I can't meditate. <laughs> There's no such thing as a human being that can't meditate. There are human beings that won't meditate. There are humans who have been taught to be afraid to meditate. But there is no human being or any other being who cannot meditate. Because what you're saying is, I can't find myself. Oh, really? Where are you looking? Do you follow that reasoning? Yeah, yeah, that's lovely. Thank you. You know, um, I'm hoping our viewers can witness this too. I've noticed with, with you being in front of a white wall, um, when one softens the eyes, it's easy to see the energy and the aura flowing around the head and the body. Um, a perception uh, that sometimes is challenging for, for folks to tap into, but in front of a white wall makes it a little bit easier. Uh, so I guess there's no coincidences. We can almost have a little um, tutorial here on, on seeing energy and auras in the same breadth of an update to the event. That's pretty cool. The channel that we are using is feeling that energy on his skin now. <laughs> Has been doing so for several hours now. Yes. He said that he felt like the package of information dropped in a few hours ago. Can you explain began, to him? Yes, began the day when you contacted him and asked to speak with us. Uh, and he intentionally began asking uh, every night since. Okay. <laughs> How is that for you when that request comes through? Well, we're always here. He doesn't yeah. always pay attention. <laughs> Humans can be that way. Yes, you can. <laughs> All right. Well, it's just been a joy um, in this ninth update. Um, thank you so much. Do you want to um, share a final message before we sign off here? We would say that although it may not have seemed so when we spoke earlier, that we are so very gratified that so many of you have stepped onto the path and are making the changes that you have cried for and prayed for, for thousands of years. Come home. That is what we would say. All right, well, thank you very much. And uh, we'll let Ron just bring himself up here a little bit. Okay, awesome. We appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Likewise. Very much. Well, 
Good to Bye-bye. see you, Ron. Love you. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> Bye now. See you later. Bye.